Truman's Town Hall with your host, Matt Truman. Dead blood in the streets, it's up to my ankles. Feet blood in the streets, it's up to my knee. Feet blood in the street, the town of Chicago. Feet blood on the rise, it's following me. Hey guys, uh, welcome to Truman's Town Hall. This is Matt Truman. Don't you just love the doors? And if you don't, stop listening to this podcast right now. I love the doors. I'll let you listen a little bit. Hold on, here we go. All right, today on the podcast, we're going to talk about the social media policy. So that's going to be awesome. And we're going to hear Robbie Krieger. Go ahead. And this is where Jim Morrison... Wax is poetic. Blood in the streets in the town of New Haven. Blood stains the roofs and the palm trees of Venice. Blood in my love in the terrible summer. Bloody red sun of fantastic LA. All right, guys, welcome to Truman's Town Hall. That, that's The Doors, Peace Frog. It's on uh, all kinds of different albums, records, MP3s, CDs, whatever you call them these days. Thank you for listening. I'm driving down I-35 in sunny San Antonio, Texas, and I wanted to do a podcast on the move. And uh, so, yeah, welcome. We have in store a interesting show. Let's start out with something good. The city of Huber Heights City Schools just received a grant, a joint grant that was uh, given to the Dayton City Schools and the city of Huber Heights for $1 million. The wife of Mark Zuckerberg, uh, the CEO of Facebook, has a education grant that they give out to cities across the country and Dayton and Huber Heights won this grant so that's awesome it's spread out over three years I don't know the distribution percentage so how much Dayton receives versus how much Huber Heights receives I don't know the numbers for that the percentage but I do know that it's spread out over three years regardless uh, Dayton City Schools obviously is much bigger so they may receive a bigger percentage I don't know if it's split down the middle that'd be awesome but if they even received 10%. That's still a lot of money, a lot of free money that they didn't have before. So, what the article says on Huber Heights, uh, yeah, it's HuberHeightsCitySchools.org. Check the website out. There's an article that talks all about the grant. So, go on there, read about the grant. It talks about doing uh, what they would like to uh, use the money for after school programs, math tutors, uh, helping train staff uh, with for children with who've experienced trauma. And you may not know that a lot of kids who experience trauma, that is a big cause for substance abuse issues, either in adolescence or later on in life. So that is excellent, excellent. Very good news for the city of your rights. And, uh, you know, I've always said, if you bolster the school system in the city of your rights, if you make it better and continue to improve upon it, 
there will be no end to the growth and the expansion of the city of Hebrew Heights in a hugely positive way. You'll have more people coming into the city. I mean, more than you do now. Okay, I'm not saying it's a negative on that side because I think you do. You guys are selling houses and things. So, anyway, I just wanted to bring that up. I think it's awesome. When I read it, I was, you know, pretty excited for the schools. Now, now let's talk about the social media policy. Last night, March 25th, 2019, the city of Huber Heights, city council, decided that you need a social media policy. Now, is the social media policy transparent? Oh, I don't know about that. Read Article 16 or Section 16 of the Rules of Council. You can find that at hhoh.org. It's Article 16, Social Media. Some people may love this because they, they want their council members to be quiet. I don't. I don't. I want them to be able to say whatever they want to say. Now, there's only a few council members who do use social media. There's only a few. We can go back as far as, or not even as far as, but go back to 2013 when the rules of council were amended to adjust the former mayor's position as chair of the work sessions. They removed him as chair for the work sessions because they didn't like his discussion. They didn't like what he was talking about. They didn't want him running the meetings for hours on end. They just didn't like it. So whatever Team Heights doesn't like, and I say this with peace and love, they will change it. And it's all legal. It's done down the lines of being legal and everything. But you have to read into it. It's about controlling the message. It's about using the rules of counsel to silence other people, to silence what can be said or can't be said. So if a member of a active community member on city council, one of the council members who is out in the community constantly, and there are few, there are some who are not. I mean, that's just the way it is. There are some who hold certain meetings throughout the city, informative uh, constituents meeting, constituency meetings. From reading these rules of council, it doesn't appear that they can have these meetings and say, follow me on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, and I, I post certain informational things on my Facebook that you can follow. It is just a complete separation, and in my view, a complete destruction of council members' First Amendment. That's just my opinion. I'm not a civic lawyer. I don't understand a lot of it. And when I say I don't understand it, I don't understand why they needed to do it. I understand why they're doing it. They could have simply said, hey guys, let's just make sure we separate. We're all adults here. Let's just make sure we separate our Facebook pages because generally that's where they communicate is on Facebook. Let's separate our Facebook, or they could have said social media and website. Let's separate that from the actual city. Don't use the city logo. Make sure you have a disclaimer. Fine. Anybody would have said, okay, no problem. We'll make sure it's separated because when I talk about real issues, and that's what should be talked about, real issues in the city, and promoting the city and all that stuff that a lot of them do do, which is great, part of the job. Now it all has to be separated, and they can't talk about certain things in city functions. So, and another thing, you won't see any staff members on uh, the Hubert Ride City staff answering any questions on any other page except the city of Huber Heights page, which ones I don't know. I follow the page, but I just don't see it active as much. So it's about controlling the message, people. It really is. Because honestly, what good does a social media policy serve? 
just to shut people up. That's all it serves. Shut people, or attempt to shut people up. Because there were two members of the city council who voted no. They voted no last time, which the rules of council, due to two absences, it failed. But Mr. Lyons was back. He cast his vote. And the yes column, the yay, and it passed. Okay, let's read some of these wor- uh, rules of the city account, uh, city council. So, uh, yeah, I believe it's section 16. If you go to social media, go down to where it says social media guidelines. Guide, they're just guidelines. Could you be censured publicly? Could it turn into a scandal? Could you be kicked off council eventually? Maybe, maybe. This site should not be designed, or it says the site should not be designed as a quote-unquote governmental page. The site should not appear to be an official city internet platform. Not, in all caps. This site should have a disclaimer. So they all got to put disclaimers on their sites now. Their Facebook pages and whatnot. Elected officials should not promote the private internet platforms at official city meetings or in official city correspondence. So they can't... What is considered an official city meeting? Is that the uh, meet and greets that some of the council members have? Hmm, I wonder... Let's see, let's go down to social media standards and read number three, elected officials should never represent themselves as a spokesperson for the city council, board, committee, or commission. Maybe not a, I speak for all of them, I speak for myself, but I am a representative, I represent my uh, constituents. Elected fit number four, elected officials should consider the potential impact of social media statements prior to posting. Wow. Wow. So what's that mean? I mean, hello. Elected officials should not post information about matters involving pending or threatening litigation, items that are or may be appealed to them in their official capacity or to city boards or commissions. Elected officials should not use internet platforms to communicate with city employees about city-related matters. And don't tag anyone anymore. That was good for a while. Who shut that down? Did anything come about? Was the city sued? No, it wasn't. But they they are using that to say, ladies and gentlemen, we need a social media policy because we will be sued. Was the city sued? The city has not even been sued to challenge the charter that they are not following right now. So there are some of the rules, some of the guidelines. Just a little bit, a little taste. I want you to go read them. And I want you to ask Mr. Otto and Mr. Shaw, council members, why they voted no on the city council social media. Don't ask the yeses. You know why? Because they want to control the message. Ask Mr. Shaw, ask Mr. Otto, why did you guys vote no? And there you'll have it. There you'll get your answer. Everybody, thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading this episode. If you disagree with me, please let me know. I really enjoy and I like to, uh, you know, think about those that do disagree with me because maybe I have a Uh, an opinion that I didn't fully think through. So I like to think that we can all get along, have a good conversation, Uh, go over to Brick City Town Hall, join the Facebook page or the group there, and like Truman's Town Hall on Facebook as well. Truman Town Hall Podcast.